Hey, welcome guys. This is Tex. Uh, in this video, I want to very briefly cover how I have my options chain and my options level two set up in Lightspeed Trading. So if you're considering using Lightspeed Trading or you're already a client of theirs and uh, you want to see how to get your uh, platform set up to be able to trade options in such a way that I do, hopefully this video is helpful to you. So starting with our options chain, um, of course, this is showing us our various um, uh, strike prices available that we can choose from and expiration. So by default, your options chain will have in the middle your expiration price and your strike price for the underlying. We're currently looking at Netflix. Uh, but the columns that I like to see is uh, open interest. So this is going to tell us how many contracts are currently open at uh, each of those strike prices. Uh, I also like to see percent change and dollar change from the open. Uh, and then I like to see bid and ask. Uh, by default, you're probably also going to have a column for the last price traded, but I just kind of removed that because I didn't necessarily need to see that in my options chain. Uh, if I really want to see that, I can see it here in our time and sales in the options level too. Um, if you want to change your columns up, you can just right click on any column. If you just want to remove it, just choose remove column. Um, if otherwise you want to add columns, go to change columns here. And uh, you will have uh, several columns that you can choose from, including volume. That's another one that you might actually want to look at. Um, you can choose this drop down menu here, and you'll have some other options. For example, if you want to see your Greeks, uh, Delta, Theta, etc., um, you do have that option. You will have to contact Lightspeed to have them activate that, but it doesn't cost anything. You'll just have to give them a call or shoot them an email and have them activate your Greeks for you. So once you um, have a column, let's say we want to see Delta, we just highlight it and click on Add, and it would move it over here, and the column would appear in my options chain. When you're done setting up your columns, just click on OK, and you're good to go. So at the top, we have uh, near date is what I choose because I'm day trading options. So I just want to see the uh, expiration date that is nearest to uh, the current date. So we're always basically trading the current week expiration. We have the option of going out several weeks or whatever you want to see there. Um, I always have near money chosen for my strike prices because I'm always trading either in the money or very near the money. But if you want to see all the strike prices, you can choose all prices and scroll down and you have all those prices available to you. And then finally, with uh, near money selected, I always have the maximum amount of 10 strike prices shown that are nearest to the money. So that's how I have my options chain set up. Going on to our options level two, um, you know, it's obviously very similar to an equity level two with the bid on the left, ask on the right, we've got time and sales over here, but we have the ability of adding these nice hot buttons across the bottom. So in order to do that, we would simply go to our gear icon up here at the top, and this brings up our settings window. Within our settings window, what we want to do is go to uh, commands and you'll see that I actually have several custom commands created over here. So as you create a command, uh, they will appear over here. So if I just simply choose the first one, which is uh, if I want to buy one contract and this is what I use to open a position, I will either buy calls if the underlying, if I believe the underlying is going to go up in value or I will buy puts if I believe the underlying is going to basically sell off. Um, so to create that, you would uh, first choose your side being buy, market. I cho always just choose smart market. I've never had any issues with that. But you have the ability to choose individual markets like NASDAQ or whatever. Um, the type of order is always set to limit, and the time and force is set to day. Um, on this side, uh, with position to close, this isn't really necessary. We don't want to choose close out here, but uh, by default, I think this is what it has here. Um, but we're not actually closing a position, so we don't need to worry about that so much. It's uh, this right here, without position to close. This is where we want to actually put the number of contracts that we're trying to create this custom order to buy. So since we were creating an order to buy one contract, we have that set to one. The other important thing is our target price. I have this set to ask because, as I said, when I want to open a position in options, I want to make sure that I get in the trade when I hit the button. So um, I choose limit order at the ask. Uh, you could certainly choose a market order here instead. That would um, always give you a fill, but you never know what kind of fill you're going to get with a market order. Generally, I've never had a problem getting a fill when I choose uh, to use a limit order at the ask. Um, if you are concerned about that, you can add um, a dollar amount here to uh, allow for a little bit of slippage. So let's say that you're okay getting filled 20 cents over the ask. You would just put 0 0.20 there, and that means that uh, when you hit the button, you will uh, get filled up to 20 cents 
above the ask price when you actually hit the button. Uh, so I always just leave that at zero. Uh, the other important thing is uh, for the command action here, I always set this send to market. That means the second that I hit my hot button, it's going to send the order directly to the market. It's not going to pop up a confirmation window that I have to further click another button to confirm, yes, I want to send it to the market. So that's also very important for the way I trade options. And then once you're uh, done with that, this uh, button here, instead of saying update, it should say save. And uh, you just click that and you'll see that your custom order gets added to the list here. So that's how you create a buy order. If you want to create a sell order, for example, say you want to uh, create an order to sell 25% of your position. Well, you can see I have a custom order here. Um, of course, we would choose sell for the side. Everything else remains the same. Uh, except with position to close, we select close out and you'll see we have three options, quarter position, half position, and full position. So depending on what type of order you want to create, in this case, selling 25%, of course, I choose quarter position. Um, without position to close is not really important because we're using this to actually sell a position. Um, and then the uh, other important thing for target price, this is totally up to you, but I always choose mid for selling my position. The reason is, is because uh, sometimes some of these options, especially Amazon, there's a little bit of a spread. And if you choose to sell your position on the bid, you're probably going to get an instant fill, but you're not going to get a very good fill because of the spread. So you get some of that slippage involved there. So I choose mid, which puts my order in between the bid and the ask. That way I get a decent fill, but I don't risk not getting a fill at all if I just put it on the ask because of the, the spread. Sometimes you, you'll find if you try to sell on the ask and all of a sudden, uh, you know, the stock stops moving in your direction, you might not get a fill. So uh, I find mid works really well. I get decent fills and I generally get filled pretty quickly as well. So that's how I have my order set up to scale out. Same goes for selling 100%. We just choose to close our full position. Now, if I actually want to scale out um, on the ask, I created a couple of extra orders here to sell one, two, and three contracts. And the way these are set up is all the orders, uh, the settings are the same except with position to close, I chose up to, in this case, I want to sell one, so I put one there. And my target price on this is the ask. So if I believe that the the uh, price of the contract is going to continue going higher, and I just want to throw an order out on the ask by clicking one button, um, that's what I have these orders created for. So once you're done creating your custom orders, uh, it's just as simple as going to your hot buttons tab right here. All of your custom orders will be listed here. You'll see I have one here that I have not added as a hot button for selling three contracts. You would just select the uh, custom orders you created and uh, choose to add. And you'll notice that it has added that sell three contracts over here. And you'll see the button down here at the bottom where it says sell three. So I'm actually just going to remove that because I don't want it on there. And then once you're done, just click OK, and uh, it'll look something like this. So you'll see I have my orders to buy one, two, and five contracts. Here's my orders to sell one or two contracts on the ask. And across the bottom, this is for scaling out of percentage of my positions in between the bid and the ask. Uh, the last button that I didn't really go over is close all. This is like uh, my panic button that's uh, just a purely stop out button. If it really goes against me all of a sudden, I can click that. It will close my entire position using a market order. So um, hope you guys found the video helpful. If you have any questions, please do post below. I appreciate it as always. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.